Hello and welcome back to the studio at Africa Energy Forum in association with Engerati. We're now joined by John Campion from uh, APR Energy. Uh, John, welcome back to the studio. It's Thank been you. A, it's been a whole year. Uh, I, I enjoyed our conversation the last time uh, very much. And uh, one of the things that uh, is coming through in the, uh, uh, in the interviews and uh, uh, PwC first interview I did, uh, kind of identified it as uh, one of the uh, sort of mega trends or mega needs is um, this uh, uh, fast tracking of energy uh, delivery into Africa. Uh, how how can we solve that problem? Because a lot of a lot of the projects that we're talking about, a lot of people who've sat in this chair have said, "Well, in five years' time, we'll be doing this." Uh, and I uh, bet my bottom dollar, there's a whole bunch of people uh, in Africa going, "Well, I don't really want to wait five years." Thank you. Uh, it's good to be back. Um, typically, power plants, traditional power plants are three to five years. There's uh, an RFP process, there's a, a bid opening, there's a bid selection, there is a financial closure, there's a selection of an EPC contractor, and it's three years before a shovel is put in the ground, and then maybe it's two to three years before the plant's commissioned. In that time frame of the very first portion of it, the RFP, we can have a very, very large power plant up and running. Um, we delivered 450 megawatt into Libya in 120 days last summer. So from contract signature to generation of the full 450, it was approximately 120 days. And so when we talk fast track, we're talking fast. Fast. Yeah. yeah. So, so that then kind of comes up with another question. And I'm going to create a hypothetical framework to answer the question. So there's a need right now. In parallel to that need, there is this bidding process and so on that you've just described, which goes from zero to six years before you finish. And uh, a company like yours comes in in the meantime and solves the need. My obvious question is, well, if you've already solved the need, what's the point of this other thing? Well, that's kind of the point, right? right. So in other words, we can go from a bridging solution to a definitive solution. The technology we're deploying is a dual fuel gas turbines, and they're in the 25 to 30 megawatt range in association with our partners, General Electric. So um, GE is our partner for the mobile gas turbine business, and we have, we have an exclusive uh, contract with them for the provision of those into this particular market, which is the fast track rental market or the fast track um, rental being the, being determined as something from you know, three months to five years type of thing. So that gives us an enormous amount of capability to move equipment very, very fast, have it up and running. So that can transition into a definitive solution. I mean, these turbines are, as I say, air derivative, they're dual fuel, they can fire liquid, i.e. diesel, or natural gas. And that will solve an enormous amount of problems very, very fast in a lot of these markets. And uh, so again, I'm going to talk hypothetically, right? So, um, here's a country that have got a bidding process. A, uh, um, an organization like yours is, is in there uh, solving the need uh, and they have uh, this other tendering process. I, I'm now one of the people who, who's replying to that tender but I see, hang on a minute, it's already, it's already being solved and there's, uh, there's an incumbent effectively already in there. How do those two things kind of still work in parallel or would you guys then be part of the bidding process for the Of course. The right. Yes, we would be part of both. In other words, we could do a two we could do a, a, a two-step process. So we could we could provide the power for that period up until a definitive comes Understood. online yeah, in yeah. parallel yeah. and then while we're doing that we could also bid that definitive at the end of the day. Yeah. And, and in terms of you know, again, I suppose uh, you know the, the name temporary power and stuff like that is actually a bit of a misnomer. It is a it misnomer. Makes, it, it makes people think that it's something you throw away at the end or, or, or whatever. Right. It's a, what you're describing is a much more sustainable process. It's a much more sustainable. It's uh, it's it's engines that have got a 30-year life, uh, gas turbines. It's the same technology that's on the wing of an airplane. Uh, so the the engines are highly reliable, uh, highly fuel efficient, and uh, very, very fast for implementation, as in setting up, commissioning, and, uh, and setting into operation. 
And uh, I would uh, imagine as well that you know that there's a lot of drive towards renewable energy. Everybody says we, we want renewables as part of the mix. Um, we all know the issues with renewables. You know, they, they, they kind of work when they want to work, not when we want them to work. Uh, I would imagine that there's an opportunity to create a hybrid. There know? is. So, so you, you've got your wind farm or your solar or whatever, and next to that, you've got this highly rampable thing yeah, that uh, complements. It does. Uh, we had a we had a panel this morning, and we were talking about a, you know uh, base load, and we we're talking about base loading power and the fact that the renewables, whilst they're, they're, they're very good and very sustainable and very green, it sun doesn't shine at night when you want to boil your kettle and sometimes the wind doesn't blow when you want to boil your kettle. So ultimately you've got this gap, right? And storage isn't what it needs to be and that's a technology that's coming on stream. It's not economically viable either. No, it's yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, Putting a base load on is very, very important. Then peaking against that would be, you could peak against the wind or you could peak against the solar. Our units are 20 to 20, 20 to 30 megawatt apiece. So you can bring on a block and you bring it on very, very fast. Uh, from zero, we can ramp up in two to three minutes. So that's a very, very fast awesome. ramp up. As the sun's going down, you can be ramping us up, if you will. Um, we, we also, when we talk about sustainability and to put, to put it in perspective, Natural gas is obviously, in terms of fossil, the preferred fuel. And if you're looking at a diesel engine that's 600 parts per million of, uh, of NOx on liquid, a gas turbine on the same liquid is 42 parts per million of NOx. So it's you know, certainly 20 to 30 times cleaner. And the same machine on gas is about 15 parts per million of NOx. So 15 parts per million of NOx versus 600 parts per million of NOx is certainly on the way to sustainability and green. Plus natural gas in a lot of the markets and as it's coming on stream in Africa is a indigenous fuel. It's not imported, there's no balance of payments, it's no hard currency going out of the country, it's generation of electricity with a natural resource of the country. And, and again, I mean, we could probably maybe take that one step further because I, I, I read a, a couple of really in, interesting articles where uh, and you know there are a lot of African uh, countries where agriculture is, is the mainstay you know so you've got agricultural byproduct which, which can now again be aerobically viably turned into yeah you know gas the and, gas and, and, and that so everything can uh, join up uh, so one of my questions is uh, again and when I look at this logically and I'm maybe completely oversimplifying it, but I'll ask the question nonetheless, is it would make sense to me that if you are asking for a rene renewable plant to be built, you ought to put inherent within that some form of rampable source, because storage exactly not quite exactly. there. Exactly, exactly. that's yeah. what we were talking about this morning. Yeah. And the Minister of Energy from uh, from Zambia was, was, was commenting on that. The former energy minister from um, uh, Ivory, uh, not Ivory Coast, Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone, Leone yeah, yes, yeah. and he was actually making the same comment. And we were just talking about getting that balance right, and whilst there's an enormous push towards the renewables, it doesn't solve the full problem. And I think we need to, we need to take that in, into consideration. And he was actually making a comment that there's a place for coal as well. So there's a place for clean coal, and you can go from clean coal through the liquids all the way to, to natural gas and use that as a, as you said, a hybrid system or a hybrid solution encompassing wind and hydro, micro hydro and solar. Yeah, because all of that, when you, when you actually join it up, you have a very efficient thing. And, a, a, and I, I see a change in conversation between people talking about what I call point solutions yes. rather than a total solution, yeah, yeah, a, turnkey, a turnkey solution, and giving the country, you know, that sustainability. Because more and more economies are tied to reliable electricity. I mean, economies are absolutely tied to the need for for electricity. I mean, you're not going to grow your economy in the dark. So electricity and the most expensive kilowatt is the kilowatt you don't have. So if you look at the economic development of a lot of countries, the countries with the more um, with more generation tend to have a higher GDP per head of population. And I think as we as we proceed forward, and a lot of US government agencies get involved in the Power Africa initiative, and a lot of companies bring more engineering prowess to bear, and we begin to balance all this out, we will get the solution. But the solution is gonna be driven by the fact that now Africa is 
viewed by everybody as a very, very large market and there's dollars there and the governments are becoming a lot more transparent. We have, a, we have a lot of transparency, we have a desire to do business, we have rule of law, we have contracts that our people are taking you know, seriously and respecting. So I think across the entire energy sector, you know, Africa is, is certainly a, a, um, a very, very viable market for all of us. There, there must be a huge opportunity for you know, APR, you, you know, the, your business to kind of go in and, um, and again, I'm being hypothetical to go in and, and offer a, like a bundle solution. You know, you go right. Listen, when we do a renewable project, it comes with this, or or the other yes. way around. Yeah, you know, agreed. We, 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 when we when when we provide you with gas power, you know what? Wouldn't it be quite nice to have a, a renewable element to it? So now this. You know, clean fossil has become cleaner because you, you of course. have a PV park. And one of our uh, one of our uh, directors in, in the company, Jim Hughes, is the chief executive officer of First Solar, which is one of the very very large U.S. solar oh, companies. No, First Solar, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's on a board. Yeah. So we're we're having these discussions about how we can bring together a, a bundle solution, yeah. as you say. Yeah, because because I would imagine then you can do the optimal technical interconnectivity uh, and everything. Absolutely, and, 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 everything and just works. and just have one connection to the yeah, customer. Yeah, yeah exactly. you know, one plug-in, if you will. Yeah. Uh, so there, yeah, I, I agree with you. That's where it's, things are beginning to go and things yeah. are evolving too. Yeah. Well, uh, John, we've come to the end of our time here. Uh, it's but always all, exciting. All, always exciting. All, 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 always, always a pleasure talking uh, talking to you and. Uh, yeah, I, I think it would be really exciting that, I, I don't know, never, never said never, but maybe see you guys here next year talking about bundled solution projects or something like that. That would be a great thing. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank, thank you. you.